Welcome to the Agronomy and Farm Management Podcast. I'm Bruce. And I'm Josh, and we're your farm management hosts. Let's get started. Well, Josh, it's early December. That means we've gotten partway through our holiday season. Uh, What's on your agenda for the holidays? How do you like to get ready? Well, Bruce, getting ready for the holidays is tough for me because I haven't even thought about getting any Christmas presents yet. Presents, I always put it off to the very end to even look at them. You know, one of the things that I do for our family get-togethers is we do a Christmas quiz. And so I have three adult kids and they're either fiancés or a spouse. And the Christmas quiz is designed to test whether or not they have been paying attention all year to things that are going on in the family. So I keep these questions throughout the year. And then we sit around as a family and ask these questions and see how many they get right or wrong. It always adds to some pretty interesting laughs and kind of memories throughout the whole year. And I think there's some cheating going on because they always grade their own paper. I don't know if that's the right thing to do, Josh. Let them grade their own paper. Yeah, I would definitely cheat if you let me grade my own paper. (laughs) But you know who likes test, Bruce? Our guest this week. It's Clint Trader. He's been with OSU since 2018, and he's taken over the program manager for the Ohio Farm Business Analysis and Benchmark Programming in 2022. He's graduated the Ohio State University and has a previous experience in commercial swine production and agronomic crop management and logistics. In his free time, he enjoys working on the family farm located in Putnam County. He finds great joy in spending his fall Saturdays afternoons in the tractors and combines listening to Paul Keel's and the broadcast of the Ohio State Buckeyes. He's a lifelong Detroit Tigers fan and strongly opposed to the beginning extra innings with a runner on second base. Clint, can you explain a little bit about that last part? (laughs) Yeah, so uh, they've they've tweaked a lot of rules in baseball over the last couple years, whether it's been the runner on second base to try to shorten those extra inning games or the shift trying to institute that fielders have to stand in certain spots. And I, I just feel like baseball is such a great game. I don't think it really needs tweaking. I think they're they're chasing some maybe TV revenue and maybe not focused as on the on the field product. And some of the changes are just, I feel, detrimental long term. So lifelong baseball fan, appreciate the flow of the game. And despite all that, you're still a Tigers fan. (laughs) Hey, now, Bruce, I don't want to have to bring up the standings this year, but I I do think I remember the Tigers maybe finishing a spot or so ahead of the Cleveland Guardians. So just a reminder. Yeah, and I think some of those uh, series went your way, not mine. So, yeah, well, it's good to have you here, Clint. You do a really good job as program manager for one of the high marquee programs at Ohio State. That's the Ohio Farm Business Analysis and Benchmarking Program. That's a mouthful in and of itself, and it kind of makes sense when you hear the words. So what is the Ohio Farm Business Analysis and Benchmarking Program? So uh, we work one-on-one with Ohio farmers to evaluate their farm business. I think that as farms grow and change, there, there's definitely a burden there is when it comes to all these records I keep. How do I make sense of them? How do I kind of look at the overall output of the farm? And, you know, how do I gauge profitability or long-term success to maybe reach some of my goals? You know, with our program, we work on accrual adjustment. We think about accounting principles and what do we use on farms. And the vast majority of farms in Ohio are probably keeping cash accounting records. And and there's some obvious tax benefits to do that. But we do that accrual adjustment. And essentially, that's our, our opportunity to take all of those transactions that have happened and put them towards a single crop year. And I always say, okay, I purchased seed in the fall of 2022 as a prepaid or maybe some fertilizer. I grew that crop in 2023. I harvested the grain. And now I'm going to sell that grain in in 2024. So now that one crop has transactions that are on three different Schedule Fs. And and by making that accrual adjustment, we're trying to put that all together into one crop year that we can look at it and and kind of eliminate some of that noise that happens with uh, when you start stretching things over those three different tax years. So be simplifying some of the messy that happens just from a tax standpoint. From a farm business analysis, sounds like you're hopefully simplifying the end line, the bottom line to maybe farm profitability. Yeah, I think that's kind of the thing is whether you're milking cows, growing crops, whatever it might be, you know, how do we calculate that cost of production? And I think sometimes that can be challenging because, like I said, if you have 
transaction spread out over three years, you know, then you have to kind of remember, well, I paid this much in seed in 2022. Was that for the 2023 crop or was some of that the 2022 crop? And so really trying to drill down, put it all together and make it a lot easier as we work on maybe that cost of production and some other factors there. So Clint, I've been told that this is the right time of the year for a farm business to consider farm business analysis. Is that true? Well, I think that when we, we think of farm operations and the record keeping, certainly, as I mentioned, with, with tax season coming up or that end of the year, you know, we get into December and those books are out. I think it is a great time to at least begin to look at, okay, I need to complete a balance sheet at the end of the year. Our program to make those accrual adjustments I mentioned we need to do a 1231 end of the year balance sheet or a January 1st beginning of the year balance sheet. And, you know, that's what we use. We want to be consistent, make that balance sheet on that same calendar date every year. So certainly this time of year, farms are trying to gauge potential profit. What's their tax burden going to potentially be? A lot of those decision factors that go into play, are we going to make purchases? Do I need to make more sales to show an income level that, that's acceptable? And so as we make those decisions, certainly keeping those records, we're going to have those available. It'd be a good time to maybe get in contact with us and say, okay, I want to do a farm business analysis for my 2023 crop year. What do I need to do? So, Clint, with the participation in this program, have you heard, observed any barriers that farmers may have some reluctance to do farm business analysis? Yeah, certainly. I think one of the things is the fear that the records maybe aren't up to snuff, that they, they're going to find some areas where I ask questions they maybe don't have the answers to when it comes to record keeping. And that's certainly fine. I think, Bruce, you've worked in the past with like quick you know, some software to do some of that record keeping. And this is just kind of another tool in the toolbox. You know, I don't expect you to be perfect right out of the gate, but I think it gives you an opportunity to learn new things about your operation, maybe strengthen your skill set on what records am I keeping and try and improve long term. I think that another barrier is just the time. Everybody thinks that, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to sit down. Nobody wants to sit down and do book work. I think that not nobody, but the, the majority of our farm clientele doing the book work maybe isn't their favorite part of the job. And and so I think that there's the, maybe this idea that, oh, it sounds time consuming. And, and it really isn't. If you work with our team, we can work with you in whatever manner you have your records now and try and get that and make it as painless as possible. I think the first year is the hardest. There's some steps to getting started that make it a little bit more challenging when it comes to some of our inventories, our asset schedules of what equipment we own and things like that. But in that year two and onward, it's really pretty painless. Now, Clint, when I hear farm business analysis, that does sound scary to me. So I can see why people want to kind of just avoid it and be hesitant about jumping right in. Can you break it down into different steps, kind of just breaking down farm business analysis? What is it? Try and make it less scary. Yeah, so I mentioned balance sheets and really the foundation of our farm business analysis is that beginning balance sheet. If we were going to do an analysis on our 2023 calendar year, we're going to start off with a balance sheet from the end of 2022, beginning of 2023. So that December 31st, January 1st timeframe. You know, I say it's the foundation because this is where we're doing the traditional balance sheet things, but we're also putting in a lot of those intermediate assets. So we calculate costs cost value for our program. So if you have a combine that you've owned for 10 years, we look at what was the purchase price of that combine when we bought it 10 years ago, and we try to assign depreciation for those last 10 years. And I think that's another thing that people hear depreciation and they think about, well, you know, I depreciated something out fully the first year I bought it on my taxes. And that's a little bit different than what we're doing. We're looking at that economic depreciation. So by doing that, we're taking 7% every year over the life of that equipment. We need to kind of put together that listing of those intermediate assets. Then we also need to look at our long-term assets. What are our structures, our buildings? What crop acreage do we own? And then the other thing is that current assets. And I think sometimes that's hard for people to maybe keep good records on, or they maybe don't understand the importance of keeping some of those records as far as what do I have in inventory? How do I value maybe some growing crops? I've planted a field of of winter wheat this year.
or what kind of value do I assign to that? And that's where we go in and we look at it and say, okay, what were the, the expenses associated with it? And that's what we kind of put in is that value on a per acre basis. So that's really the starting point is that beginning balance sheet. If we have a beginning balance sheet, we must end up having something that sounds like an ending balance sheet because you talked about the beginning of the crop year 2023 with a balance sheet. So do we have another balance sheet then at the end that looks at assets and liabilities? Yep. So we'll do the same thing at the end of the year. So the end of 23, and we're going to want to create that balance sheet. Now, this one should be quite a bit easier because really we've got all of that information in the beginning. Now we just need to figure out what changed through the course of the year. Did I sell a tractor? Did I buy a new tractor? And those things would go in, but then we've got the bulk of that equipment that's still there. And so we just need to then maybe make that our depreciation adjustment on that equipment. But other than that, we don't need to change it. So the ending balance sheet's a little bit easier. You know, we're going to see what grain we've got in inventory. What are the changes on my loans? Did I make my payments on all the loans? Did I take out any new loans? And and really just compare that beginning to the end. And then got the opportunity then to look at kind of the output. What were the changes in, uh, you know, maybe my working capital or things of that nature, where we can start to look at some of those financial metrics, like our current ratio and things like that. So Clint, when does the income and expenses come into play, like the cash flow statements? So when we think about doing our tax returns, we're doing that Schedule F information, and that's really the data that I need for step three. What were my income, or what break those down into different categories? What income did I have? And then what expenses did I have? So we're going to take that cash flow information, and this is where the term we would use is this is our whole farm analysis. So at this point, we're looking at income and expenses, and we're kind of working into the analysis portion on the whole farm side. And then from there, flow into, for farms that participate in our program, in order for them to be submitted into the database and get back all of the benchmarking reports and other things that have value, we need to get that discrepancy, that cash discrepancy down to less than 1% or $5,000. So this is kind of where we go through some accuracy checks at the end of the year. Can we account for all the dollars in or all the dollars out and less than 1% or $5,000. So you can think about on, on some operations, you get to be a certain size and $5,000 can maybe disappear through the cracks pretty quick, depending on we bought something with maybe the personal credit card, but it ended up as an asset on the farm somewhere. And, and did we track that? That or other situations like that. And so that's really where we kind of work through that accuracy check and try and make sure that, you know, we're accounting for everything. Then that farm would essentially be able to be submitted and they would get benchmarking information on the financial side back. So it sounds like steps one through three, plus the little accuracy check step there as well. One through three is really about collecting the data. And so the last step, step four, is analysis and, and results. What That's really where the excitement happens, really with your team members and yourself doing that analysis for the participating farm. So as I mentioned, we're kind of talking about the whole farm, but then we can go into more detail and do that enterprise analysis. So if we've got our expenses split up, for example, I had fertilizer that I bought for corn acres, I had some for soybean acres, some for wheat, we can assign those dollars, we can do that allocation, and then kind of really dive into this enterprise. And when I think of my farm operation, what crops made money, what fields were more profitable, and dive in on looking at those records and how does that affect maybe our profitability or what was our true cost of production. The other factor on that is talking about expenses a lot, but how did I market my grain? I think that's another big one is then we take it and we look at, okay, I, I've got my grain that it was marketed for this amount or it's in storage at this value. How does that compare to my peers? And so uh, that's where I think it's really neat to kind of start diving into some of that benchmarking data for your operation and trying to maybe identify some areas is where your costs were too high or maybe your marketing plan needs some tweaks or improvements because compared to the Ohio group, you know, you were falling behind. Now, Clint, I'm from Jackson County. In Jackson County, we really don't have a lot of grains. When you think of the grand scheme of things, we're more of beef cattle and forage country. Do you only work with traditional grain farmers? 
Nope. Um, I think that, you know, being from Northwest Ohio myself, I, I kind of slipped into that. Grain is maybe the easiest example that I come across, but, you know, we work with any kind of farm. We still have a number of farms that are growing some forages. We have all sorts of options as far as we can classify that forage as grass hay or whatever it might be. If, if we're intensively managing pastures, we can, we can track that as well. And then we do have, in addition to our crop summary, every year we try and do a dairy summary. We do have a pretty significant number of dairy farms that participate in the program. A lot of those are kind of on the eastern, northeastern portion of the state. But beef is an area that we definitely want to expand. We do have some farms that participate, whether it's feedlot or cow-calf. But, you know, it, just because we don't have a summary doesn't mean that we wouldn't be able to provide a useful tool for those farms. And, and that's an area that we definitely want to expand. It'd be great if we had enough cow-calf producers that wanted to participate. They completed an analysis and, and we could put out a beef summary that uh, would provide benchmarking reports to those producers and help them kind of see maybe some of those areas to improve in their operation. So Clint, it seems like a couple output products of this program, the Farm Business Analysis Program, are a couple balance sheets that the farmers then would have. They're reviewed by yourself and did that have done that accuracy check on. Can the balance sheet that this program generates fulfill what maybe my ag lender needs as an update usually every January or February? Yeah, I've talked to some ag lenders in the past, and they've told me how much they appreciate our balance sheets that we put together for our clientele. It's better than the napkin or paper towel that things were written down on that they brought in for changes or the old receipt that's maybe been sitting on the dash of the truck for a couple months that we turn into the lender. So I think there's definitely some value there. We don't want to recreate the wheel. As I said, my process is, is pretty strict or stringent on when we need to do those balance sheets and Obviously, if you're working with a lender on a new loan, they might uh, want you to update that to current date, depending on the time of the year. But for the vast majority that are just doing a renewal of an operating loan, they're going to accept that balance sheet that we would put together for a farm. How can a farm utilize a service? What's it going to cost them in the long run? We've always kind of looked at our program. When you think about what you're getting back for that, to hire an accountant to do kind of this level of analysis, it's going to cost you probably between $1,000 and $1,500 dollars, depending on the size of the operation. Thanks to grant funding, we're able to offer this program for the low cost of $100. So the producer needs to have a little skin in the game, as we like to say. We charge $100 to kind of work on an analysis for a farm. If they're interested, obviously they can reach out to me personally. Best way to find that information, my contact information, or more details on the program would be at our website, which is farmprofitability.osu.edu. If you're familiar maybe with the farm Farm office site, the farmoffice.osu.edu. You can certainly go there under the farm management tab. There's a link to that farm profitability site as well. And, and that's where they can really find all that good information and as far as how to contact me and, and get in touch to maybe ask some questions to see if this is going to be a program that would work for them. So Clint, kind of a take-home message that I like to share with folks about cash accounting. You know, let's keep the cash accounting advantages and benefits that we have in that system on the farm, but let's do an accrual adjustment one time a year and really reset everything to an accrual basis so that we can really get a good handle on that. An economist years ago shared a statement with me, and there's plenty of research that backs up this statement, a Schedule F farm profit and loss statement that we send to the IRS may in fact be the worst financial statement that a farmer can use to make decisions if it's a standalone document and if that's the only thing that we're looking at. But that information is exactly what your program is asking for, Clint, plus a couple balance sheets. That's really all it boils down to. And is that a good summary of the, the simplicity of your program? What is needed and what do we get out of it? Yeah, I think so. I think the, the idea of yeah basing decisions off of a Schedule F can be be troublesome for sure. I think you've kind of hit the highlight there. I know University of Illinois and, and Texas A&M have done a lot of work on that and just kind of the idea that by doing this accrual adjustment, we can maybe spot problems that are occurring on the farm, whether it's cash flow issues, maybe it's we're selling more every year, so we're dwindling down our inventories. We can spot those kind of problems two years sooner by doing that accrual adjustment as opposed to just looking at our Schedule F and saying, oh, our income was down this year compared to last. And then, you know, that happens a couple more times and we realize, oh boy, we don't have enough money to maybe cover some of those debt obligations. How the heck did we get into this position? 
transition. And, and so I think that's one of the real benefits of doing that accrual adjustment and then kind of taking that Schedule F information or those those records that you're going to turn into your taxes and, and go in the next step to doing that whole farm analysis. Well, thank you, Clint, for joining us on this podcast. We greatly appreciate you. Is there any final thoughts you'd like to leave our viewers with? I think that this is a great tool. I, I would encourage, you know, if you're a farm operator and you're thinking about, you know, what do I need to do, whether it's maybe expanding, passing on to the next generation, as we've kind of maybe seen commodity prices trend down this year, you might have questions about profitability next year. I think that there's a lot of things that we can answer with this analysis tool. And I would encourage you to reach out and maybe begin that conversation or talk to your local extension office on farm record keeping and maybe some tactics there that could be beneficial to you in the long run. Thanks, Clint. We appreciate what you do. My pleasure to be here today. Thanks. Thanks for listening today. For more information about farm management tips, be sure to check out the farm office at farmoffice.osu.edu.